starring June Lockhart, Hugh Riley, John Provost as Timmy, and, of course, Lassie. my girl. Listen, you better go hurry and get Timmy at school now. It's getting awfully late and it looks as though there's going to be a bad storm. Seem like a good idea. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll get you a towel. Hope Timmy and Lassie stayed at school until this blows over. Oh, I'm sure Miss Hazlitt will hold them there. You know, with all this pure water coming down, it's a shame we have to boil our own water in order to be able to drink it. I wish I knew what was causing the pollution. No, I don't know. I drained all the polluted water out of the well, checked the filtering system, the well seems to be functioning fine. There's no sludge gathering in the pipes. I guess tomorrow I'll just pump in a fresh tank full and see what happens. Yeah. Oh. Why didn't you say it's school? Close the door, you'll flood the kitchen. Oh, Timmy. You hadn't started your brain when school got out. Thanks, Dan. So I decided to make a rush for it. Oh, look at that light. Never mind about that now, dear. Come on, you've got to get some dry clothes on. Where's Lassie? Did she meet you at school? No. I looked for her. Then I thought you might keep her home because of the storm. Lassie! Lassie! Where do you think she is, Dad? Well, she probably found a safe spot on her way to meet you. Now she's sitting out the storm. Lassie! Dad's probably right. She probably went as far as she could and then just realized it was impossible to go any further. So she just pulled up somewhere until the storm passes over. I sure hope so. The rain's letting up. Dad, maybe she's trapped someplace. Can we go look for her? I don't know, Timmy. I, I think we better wait until... What is it, Dad? I'm sorry. I, I thought I heard barking. Where could she be? She should have been back by now. Just got to go look for her. Please? Okay. Get your raincoat on. I'll join you. And your hat. Okay, Mom. We'll be back soon. Lassie! I'm afraid 
afraid we're not having much luck tonight, Timmy. What could have happened to her? Where could she have gone? I don't know, son. We've covered a fairly wide area. Look, son, it's too dark for us to do anything more tonight. Why don't we go back, get some sleep, we'll get a fresh start tomorrow morning. Okay? seems to be a matter with her. Is she hurt? Well, she seems to be all right. Timmy, come here a minute. Lassie? Come on over here, girl. Paul, I don't like the way she's behaving. I think we better take her to the vet. Timmy? You run ahead and call him. Tell him we'll be there as soon as we can. Okay, Dad. Come on. Well, what do you think, Tom? It's what I was afraid of. What? To me and Lassie's eardrums have been shattered by some kind of shock. Shattered? That's right, Ruth. I'm afraid the hearing is gone. She's deaf? Mm-hmm. Did you say she was lost out in that storm last night? Uh-huh. Well, about the only force that would do that much damage is lightning. Lightning? Was Lassie struck by lightning? Yeah. Or at any rate, it hit close enough so that Wallop knocked her unconscious. It also, unfortunately, knocked her hearing out. Does that mean she'll never be able to hear again? Well, it's hard to say, Timmy. Take another look here. Our only hope is that the healing tissue may form a new membrane which will take the place of her eardrums. That happens sometimes. Does that mean nothing can be done? I'm afraid all we can do is hope and pray that time will heal the damage, Timmy. Come on, girl. It's time to go home. Up we go. Come on, Lassie. Come on. Why is she afraid to move, Doc? I've seen that happen before in animals who have suddenly gone deaf. They temporarily lose what we call their auditory frame of reference. In other words, Lassie hasn't adjusted to the loss of her hearing yet. Everything is strange to her. But she'll get used to it. In time, her confidence will come back. Yes, Mom? 
Jimmy, look. Lassie! Come here, girl. Come on. Come on, Lassie. Come on, girl. Buddy, it may take some time. Huh? Oh. I guess I was just hoping out loud. What did Ed say? Well, he said from the way I described it, the water's probably being polluted again by some kind of small animal or rodent. A rodent? How terrible. But it's been over two weeks since the last pollution, Dad. How come it took them this long to return? Well, I asked Ed the same thing, and he said sometimes they do that. Well, what can we do about it? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is set some traps around that cistern. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to finish screening that shed. Can I go with you, Dad? Oh, no, Timmy. You've got the rest of your homework to take care of. I'll be right back. Lassie, 
to get down. Oh. Careful now. Hang on, Paul. Watch your fingers now, Timmy. I will not. Drop it down. Put it on that brace over there. <laughs> Bats startled me and I lost my footing. I, I'm glad you finally heard me. Felt like I was hanging there for hours. Lassie heard you, Dad. Lassie? <laughs> that's true, Paul. She did. Isn't it great she can hear again? Well, that's wonderful, girl. Lassie? 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 Here, girl. Here, girl. Well, if she's still deaf, then how could she have heard your calls? I don't know. Unless she just sensed my being in danger. Oh, I guess that's it, dear. It's that sixth sense of hers. I think we'd better call Doc Weaver, have him look her over. Come on, girl. It's hard to tell. These things can get pretty complex at times. It's just possible that, like you say, she felt something was wrong. Do you think she got a scent of something, Doctor? No, it isn't very likely, Ruth. I'd like to try something. Timmy, do you still have that silent dog whistle I once gave you? <laughs> dog whistle? Yes. You know, the high-frequency kind that only dogs can hear. All fine. Thanks. Well, Doc, do you expect her to hear it? I'm not sure. She can't hear us now, though, can she? I doubt it. You see, usually in certain types of hearing loss, the higher frequencies heal first, and it's not very likely that she'd be able to hear any... I found it, Doctor. Oh, thank you, Timmy. Now, let's see. <laughs> she heard it. Lassie heard the whistle. Well, well, you know, I guess my hunch was pretty good, eh, Lassie? <laughs> Lassie, you can hear again. Lassie. Well, she can't hear your voice yet, Timmy. That'll happen later. Right now, she can only hear the higher frequencies, like this whistle. Or like those bats at the cistern. The bats? Yes. And from what you described, they were sending out a lot of radar. Radar? Sure. That's what reached Lassie from the cistern. I don't know why we didn't think of it before. Since bats are blind, they can only see by emitting a high-frequency sound that bounces off the objects in their path. Same principle as radar. We can't hear it, but a dog can. Look. See? That's the same kind of sound those bats sent out when you frightened them, Paul. Well, then I guess we have the bats to thank for Paul's being rescued. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Ruth. come to think of it, the bats owe us an apology. I think they're the rascals who've been polluting our water. Well, they've been known to do that quite often. <laughs> well, I'll be running along. Doctor, how long to last till get all of her hearing back? Well, it's hard to tell, Timmy. We'll let her determine that, hmm? So don't you worry. She'll get around to hearing a lot more than somebody's silly old radar. <laughs> Wasn't there something? Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>